Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you guys are having a good day today. We're going to be doing a wood graining pattern, so but the, we're going to be doing two different types. So um, and showing you a little bit of troweling. So we have two different kinds of products we often work with, um, well, several different kinds, but two that are very common: a countertop and a wall. And today we're going to be kind of showcasing both of them and just kind of showing you some of the different things we can do with them artistically. How are you guys doing today? We certainly are. I'll share a big cast table. We just are finishing. Is our microphone, are we having? I was just making sure you could hear me. Oh, let me know if I'm talking too quiet. I always talk too quiet, so. All right, so I'm gonna start out getting just a simple base worked in here. I'm gonna pour all my accents into an already black base. What are you guys planning this weekend? Is anybody out there just about ready to be able to jet out from the office and not look back for a few days at least? How are you? Dropping bombs in the house. Back at it every day, dropping bombs every day. Got to drop bombs every day. How are you guys today? What are you doing this weekend? I hope somebody, somebody better surprise me with something fun. I think I'm going to be mountain biking with my kids and on Saturday morning. And then I think I'm going to ride motorcycles on Sunday morning. And then check my two of my kids into school on Sunday. Do a little introduction. I don't know why they have to ruin a Sunday at a little church school. But that's what Sunday will be. So with me. Go to the mountains to go riding somewhere, probably. I like to explore the mountains in western Colorado. Okay, I'm trying to work my edges in here. Very thin, remember, I'm only trying to get like kind of a palette in the background here that we can start working with. So be patient with this base coat. Do not rush it. Take your time. Obviously, this is not really thick enough for a main pour, but it's good enough. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, everybody. Love you all. Hope you all are having a good day, dude. So, my little girl did my toes. And, I don't know, man. I like wearing flip-flops. But I was just in Home Depot looking for a, here in Grand Junction, I was just in Home Depot looking for a miniature air conditioning unit. And I'm walking by this hillbilly dude. And, man, I'm like, what the hell is that guy giving me those weird eyes for? He just looked pissed off, annoyed at me. Kept looking at my toes. Like, I realized, I was like, my goodness. Bro, I hope he's watching. Like, relax. If you had a little girl, maybe you'd understand. So I kind of thought it made him weird. Maybe he acted like I'm so weird for having painted toes. Maybe he's a weirdo for looking at my toes. I don't know. What do you guys think? Who's weirder, me for having painted toes that I let my little girl rock? Or a dude for acting all annoyed and weirded out by me because I, I'm not afraid to let him let my piglies dangle? You know what? The update on the shoes at the lake. If anybody wants to know about that, I'm going to be pretty thoughtful what I say because I pissed off about everybody in the whole town by saying that. You know, I didn't. I'd say all the normal citizens in this town love the fact that I showcased the shoes at the lake, if you know what I'm talking about. But I will say the law enforcement that I spoke to, maybe I'll say it on the live because we won't post a lot of this, but they're useless. And um, I think anything that makes a town not look like the funnest, safest town to be in, makes people that need to get elected and voted for scared. So if, if, you, if you want truth, don't get it from a politician or a, anybody else that is an elected official. And um, the, either the police lied about finding some of the stuff or didn't find it, or more likely the news, and I did put a little video out they went out and dug everything up and said that I showed them where everything was, but I never went out with them anywhere. I'd never showed them wherever, where any of the evidence was. And I found 13 pairs that said they found less than a dozen. So either they ran over it all and they just didn't want anybody to find it or something. So I don't know. I have no faith in law enforcement. I'll throw that out there right now. I, I love law enforcement, and I'm probably one of the biggest supporters of them I've ever known. I've trained with a lot of them um, since I got out of the Marine Corps. Um, and just 
been good friends with a lot of a lot of what I thought was very good police officers. But now, unfortunately, all the instances where I've really hoped they could serve their community and not their masters, I, I don't see that as a huge um, obligation. So, I don't know. All right, with that being said, there's way funner things to be had than a bunch of shoes at a pond. And, and just so you guys know, I haven't totally walked away from it. I just have to be thoughtful with y'all what I say about it because I've been warned by people that know people and people in positions of authority to be careful. And when you have somebody in a position of power telling you to be careful, you should probably be careful. So, Okay, this is where Levi needs to be a little less patterned, if you notice what I'm doing. I'm making way too much of a pattern here running my trans blue, which I do love. That's exact. That's my question. Girl dads are exempt from any and all standard snide remarks. Girl dads? Hell yeah, dude. That's, and you know what? You always know. It's always the weird dude that probably can't even get a girlfriend, and he shouldn't because he's probably a creeper that thinks I'm the weirdo for having painted toes, right? IA43, I don't know what that means. Should we look, should we look that up in Urban Dictionary? Is that something, am I gonna be like, oh my gosh, Anna in the house, the badass. She's sick of her lame ass crew. She's, no, she's with a bunch of badasses right now. But. Flocka Cheryl, Flock of Cheryl? He shared our life. Flacco shared our life. I'm not, my ears ain't working so well, Flacco. I was like, is that like flock of seagulls? So, how is everybody today? Tell me something good, please, somebody. I'm asking you guys, but it's like your ears don't work or your fingers don't type. You gotta tell me something fun you're doing this weekend. Something, maybe it's a blessing for somebody else. Who's going out and doing something, looking for somebody in need, hoping you run across that person that makes you feel like your whole day was blessed? You ever do that? You ever you ever help somebody on the side of the road or whatever, and then you like you feel good about yourself initially. You're like, man, this needs to be done or whatever. And then by the time you're done, you're like, that person was a blessing. I was I was so much more blessed to even run into that person than they were to run into me. So if you ever are lacking value, just go do something for somebody. Badass Flacco, dude, that's badass. Check, call us if you ever need help with any of that. I'd, I believe in the cross, let me tell you that one. The most important thing you ever could believe in. Jet skis are loaded. Meeting Kenny Powers up at the lake, are we? That sounds like a fun weekend, man. Be safe. We're dangerous. I always say, like, you know, I want my kids to be dangerous little bastards if they need to be. So. If you have to be dangerous, be the most dangerous bastard in the room every time. Kelly, God bless you, man. Thank you. You know what? I think everybody has battles in life they don't talk about, right? And usually the ones that are talking about their battles are the ones with maybe not the biggest battles and the ones who you start meeting people with real, real battles going on and it makes you quieter and quieter and quieter when you see what people really out there have to deal with. So, how blessed we each are, so many of us. Thank you guys for watching the live today. I love y'all. I'm gonna be, all right, my bear claw. This thing right here, um, I made this um, with a Chippewa Indian back about 72 years ago. It's made for climbing trees. All my friends call me Bear Claw, half Cherokee. Did you not know that was a country song until you heard that being played? That's my old song. Favorite part of that song, isn't that where he says he's gonna get some buffalo briefs? And I always, I heard that song when I was young and I was like, dude, I am gonna get myself some buffalo fur boxers someday. Who thinks that would be badass? Buffalo, or just bear boxer, bear, bear fur boxers. But I love bears too much. I don't, I don't think I could whack a bear. I grew up always wanting to have a pet bear, but even up in North Idaho. I had that like slight fear, but I was like, 
I thought I could also maybe tame one. I'm the mother freaking dude, yo. I'm that guy. I'm that guy with a fancy pedicure guy. So, oh man. Now I know y'all right now you're seeing bubbles and you're like, wait a minute, I don't like bubbles. Don't you worry, that's gonna be gorgeous when we finish this. Gorgeous. If you're new here, don't worry. My name is Levi Comstock and I am a countertop epoxy applicator. I'm the owner of countertopepoxy.com and diamond coat epoxy or commercial line. And right now my straps are about to dangle in the epoxy so I can barely reach over. <laughs> Try to keep my titties out of it. So. Okay, this is gonna this is gonna turn out freaking good. Thank you so much for the follows, guys. Thank you for being on our channel here today. Um, showing a couple different ways to do different wood graining patterns, and this is just one. What's this? Kelly said. Dan, Daniel Adams. I'm going to read that story. I'm going to tell you all one of my favorite stories I heard lately. And don't hold me accountable to the names because um, let me just throw this out there. I don't know. I'm not super good at golf names, but supposedly, true story. Um, they were, um, what, what do you call like presenting a new golf club that had just been finished over in Saudi Arabia um, to the people. And they were doing a big thing with TV cameras. Your mama's so old when she breastfeeds, she's like, oh dang, now water came. <laughs> now alcohol came out. I was hoping powder would come out. So do a little white chicks. If anybody's ever seen white chicks, you know. Anyways, back to the story. <laughs> so I digress. Um, okay, a little bit of transgrain on here. Mica powder sprayed with 99% isopropyl. Um, yeah, so the king of Saudi Arabia has this huge golf event that goes on and um, I don't know all the people that were there but I guess in real life Arnold Palmer was there and I guess one of the top golfers old guy I guess I'm just guessing because I'm not a golf fan whatsoever never have cared anyways um, at the very end the king of Saudi Arabia walks over to to Arnold Palmer and says hey I want you to ask me for one thing I'll grant you anything I mean it sounds like a fairy tale like Aladdin type stuff but it's real um, and you know, what an awesome thing for somebody in royalty with power and money to, to offer. So Arnold Palmer, this famous golfer, I guess, it, he's sitting there and he's, he can't think of what to do and he has a fancy golf club and he said, you know, a new golf club, Arnold Palmer, I, I'm not famous enough for you to watch me or my channel, but what a stupid request. A golf club? Come on, you're talking to a king. At least a Lamborghini or something. Anyways, you get home. He gets home and he thinks, well, there's no way the king remembered me, little old Arnold Palmer, and... Uh, request for a, for a golf club and a few weeks has passed and he's sure now he's like yeah no way no way the king even remembers anything to do with me or my little golf club I was interested in or whatever and finally a letter comes he's wait, he's waiting for mail you know to get a package or something and I never spray spray paint I never spray gold spray paint either maybe I do okay I never do but I do when I want to have fun artistically and right now that's what I'm doing so I'm going to spray this down, and then I'm going to show you what I do to scrape it. So anyways, Arnold Palmer finishes up his golf event. That probably scared the whole audience. I don't know if anybody's even there, so I hope you guys are. He gets done. The king comes over. He asks for a golf club like an idiot. Probably something like I would have done. You know, he says, I wasn't really ready. He waits for it at home. Two weeks later, the letter shows up. He sees a letter, and he's like, yeah, ha, I knew the king. I... Oh, my titties. Oh, my Thank you, good eyes, Michael. And then I turned off sideways. Okay, so he pops the letter open, reads it, you know, sure that it's not a golf club because it's not big enough to fit a golf club in. And what does it say? It's the deed to an actual club, like a clubhouse for golf. Well, when Arnold Palmer had said he wanted a golf club, the king was thinking he meant like a club house for golf because you call both a, a golf club and a golf club are the same things over there, whether it's a sticky swing or a club and what an amazing thing he got like a 500 acre resort given to him by the king and it just took him a few weeks for him to organize all that and that kind of blew me away when you hear a story like that I mean supposedly true so God bless Arnold Palmer for for having a king that was smarter than he was and I think all of us we have a king we can ask requests and he's way smarter at giving us what we need than we are at even asking for what we need that was kind of what I was convicted of so hearing that is so often when I 
pray or something. I pray for some really stupid crap compared to what the king of the universe could give you. So there, I'm not a pastor and I hate religion, but there's my little preach for the day. Oh man, I don't know if y'all like this, but it's turning out pretty. Thanks for the love, guys. Your guys' likes and follows and shares, every time you guys do that, it's a huge deal to a small company like us, especially after after yours truly, Levi, got our, got our channel pulled so many times for saying to unalive pedophiles, I guess, on a shirt. So whatever, to each their own China. So sorry they don't love me anymore for, for wearing the shirt. One final look. I'm going to torch it in a minute, but I'm going to give it a second to kind of naturally settle too, and it'll turn out way better torched. But before I get too far into that, I want to get over here and trowel. This is a totally different type of resin. This is a wall resin. So wall epoxy, Florida in the house. So yeah, this is our wall epoxy, guys. And I've just been having a lot of fun with it lately, and I've been getting a little better at it. Um, James Nisley, Nisley, you were just here. James Nisley, you were just in class. I remember you. I don't remember a lot of people, but I, I remember you. I remember every face. But names, come on, come on, bro. Okay, let me see. I got two pretty accent colors over here. I'm gonna use. Here is probably the oldest trial I've ever had. I need to clean the top off too, but this is an old, old Venetian trout plaster given to me by a guy named Chris Burke, a Venetian plaster master. I don't know. He's Nova, Nova, Nova Scotia, eh? Mindy from Nova Scotia. Is it beautiful there right now in Nova Scotia? I guarantee it is. Is that Mindy from Nova Scotia? Uh, Wendy. Wendy. I hope it's not Wendy in Nova Scotia. Hope it's just windy in Nova Scotia. Dad jokes on countertop epoxy. So dumb you don't even know they're jokes. Countertop epoxy.com. Countertop epoxy.com. Who's gonna be in our class next week or in Texas? I don't know how I don't know if we got very many people on here, but we have a really good class coming up in Texas in two weeks. I'm excited, just north of Dallas at a winery. We're gonna have a really cool guy turning into an actual friend, I think. He's a pretty, pretty legit guy, I believe. You don't meet a lot of those in life. And the longer you go not meeting them, the more valued you, the more you value the ones you do meet. So, okay, take your time with any epoxy, guys. Cleanliness is so important. You start moving a little faster and just being in a hurry and trying to get things down, you never end up moving faster. You just end up getting dirty, causing yourself problems. And you're going to redo your piece anyways. Um, Arizona, no, but come over to Dallas if you're in Arizona or next week right up here in Grand Junction. I'm not sure where in Arizona you are, but um, we have people from all over the world attend our classes here. So if you want to meet people everywhere from South America to Africa to, to wherever, come to one of our classes right here in Grand Junction, Dallas. Um, we're going to be back in Florida um, here in a few months, I believe, doing a really cool rooftop patio. We're actually going to be in Florida sealing in a, they're pouring a concrete roof, and we're going to be sealing it with epoxy. So, talk about fun. Wendy, God bless you. I hope you're having an amazing day, Wendy. Thank you for being on our, on our small channel. Gino, it's, it's got a lot to do with temperature. That's a good question, man. Um, if you're, like, keep the room about 80 degrees, and it's very easily, um, you, like, say you're trialing this into a shower, then within 24 hours, you could use that shower. So, um, but remember, that's all timing and temperature, you know, that keep it a little warmer, you know, an extra 10 degrees, 80 instead of 70, it'll cure it out way harder, way faster. It makes a big difference, so... And um, think about this, the temperature that you work the product at also has quite a bit to do with that, so. Louisiana? No, just come out to Texas, guys. If you're in Louisiana, come out to Texas. Like I say, do a road trip just north of Dallas. Some really good hotels to stay at. Um, 
and you're going to be working at a winery that serves really good food. I pay for all your lunches. Um, yeah, we're going to have too much fun. We're pouring, I think, a 728 square foot floor. A um, We're doing a almost like 160 or 150 some square foot countertop. I think it's over 160 square feet of countertop that we're doing. And then we're going to be going over some flake floor items as well. So get your ass out to Texas if you want to learn. Or if you can make it really quick, be here next week. Scarlet, you got to get out there. You'll love it. Thank you, Wendy. Fort Worth, Fort Worth, dude. That's so close. You may as well, if, if we're in Dallas, come down from Fort Worth. It's still a somewhat, we didn't really advertise the class a ton because we want to actually do, it's quite a job on there. So right now we still have some a few spot, spots available, but it's going to be a more personal work on a job site. That's the valuable classes where we're actually doing um, individual installs of real items. So come out to the class if you really want to learn. Especially if you want to learn how to make money with epoxy in your future. So, okay, now for the fun part. I do love trial and epoxy. You know, this is a thick viscosity, non seg of formula. So, once you put this on, it should stay very non seg. not to be used internally. I don't know, it seems like every time you see something say like non-sag, you, you see a warning saying no internal use and you're like, oh my goodness, I wonder who made that a needed thing on that label. <laughs> no, God bless you. I actually, it's a, like I always say, it's only because I'm not driving my car, getting blocked by slow ass people in the fast lane. This is so fun to work with. I don't know if you guys can see, but man, just slow down with it. Let it feel the um, trial kind of work. Don't try to push too hard or work too hard. Just let, let the tool do the work itself. Nice, smooth strokes. The smoother you stroke across this, the smoother of passes you make, um, just the smoother the top will be. If you sl speed up and slow down and you're super choppy, you're gonna have a really choppy actual piece. So if you don't want a choppy piece, don't be jerky with how you pull your tool across here. Make sure you have a nice clean trowel as well, so I can actually do some fun dirty troweling right onto here. Hey, Toki Doki sent us a rose. Toki Doki? Taki Doki. God bless you. Thank you so much for the rose. You know what? Thanks to every single one. And a heart me. You know what? Thanks for every single one of you that are even on the channel. You guys build our whole our whole page, our whole company, the value of us spending time here. So often just because of y'all. Teresa said, Levi, what's good? Oh, what's good? Teresa. What's good? Everything's good today. God, thank you for being here on the channel. Um, what is really good? I don't know. It's about to be bad because I'm about to scrape this and then spray it and then retrowel it. So either it's going to be really pretty here in a second or it's going to look like Levi has epilepsy. And remember, we're trying to do the exact same colors on two different pieces. Oh, dude, I'm digging it. I got to torch it. I do need to torch it, but. Another rose. I've been touched by a rose somewhere. I don't know where. Yeah, I was just telling a story about some weird phobic dude in the store. I have my painted toenails and I was looking for a little like AC in it and this guy freaked out. Like I didn't realize he was staring at me. It looked like he just came out of the mountains. He'd never seen a guy that has a little girl that does her t his toes or anything. So he looked at me like he was about to have to get forced into some like life choices he was against or something. I mean, I get that I'm a little stronger than he was probably, but man, he was freaking, he was freaking his ass out, like just staring at my toes. So I was like, relax, bro. I have a little girl. I got a little girl and she's beautiful and she does toes. Okay. What? Dude, I want to see. Oh, you know what? We'll do a rose and epoxy. Who is that? Tell them to. 
You know what? Tell them I'll try to do a rose for them. So if you want a rose and epoxy, I will try. Call our office. Link's in the bio. Call our office. Within the next, give me some freaking time, guys, because I got a lot of projects going on, like this bear claw project in front of me right now. Um, just give me a little bit of time, but I will try to make you a rose, a real one, and pour epoxy, and I'll do really high-quality casting resin, which we have really good stuff, so it doesn't turn yellow on you be a fun project anyways. I'm gonna start doing some giveaways too. Who wants some of our shirts? If anybody likes the one that says on the live, your local pedo guy, um, or any of the other shirts you think you see that you like on our page, let us know, because um, I think we're gonna start doing some giveaways, but let us know what we do that you'd rather see given away. So, I just wanna give it to you guys. So, um, the course is usually a three to four day course. Most of the courses are four days. Um, they're very hands-on, so you don't watch me. Dude, I, <laughs> I'm not going to name names, but holy crap, I see some of these epoxy classes out there where you get to watch some guy that's not even very good with epoxy who, like, went to a class with his boss, and he's basically a salesman, and you get to watch him play with epoxy, and hopefully that makes you so excited about it that you try to buy some from him. So if you come to my class, I'm not a salesman. I'm here to enjoy and pass on as much knowledge as possible and make class fun and hopefully really relatable to your projects. So if you have a specific project, a lot of people say they're trying to do their basement floors and they're worried because they have moisture, or maybe they're next to a field with a lot of irrigation or maybe they have soil movement or fracturing in their driveway but they're wanting to do their sidewalks or, you know, I, I love when you come to class with an actual project in mind so we can kind of cater the class to you because we're going to be doing you know 700 800 square feet of concrete prep in this class um, next week you know next week's class we're going to be prepping quite a bit of concrete taking some failed coating off um, explaining what creates failures in different coatings um, showing how to uh, um, work with expansion joints uh, recut we're going to fill slurries um, recut and um, um, control joints so that they continue to work so just stuff like that but we're going to be doing a lot of countertop samples wall samples and you guys will be doing it all dude september huh that sounds that sounds fun you know what i shouldn't be that's a horrible idea on this break ends i was trying to get some gold off there that was really reflective but now I think I'm going to be down to spraying and spraying some alcohol with a little hint of blue. Dandelions epoxy. Dude, dandelions and epoxy. That would be, that sounds actually pretty sweet. I like that. Dude, windy? That's what we'll be doing then. That's what we'll be doing. We'll be doing giveaways with those shirts. So if you want to hit that follow button, we'll be doing plenty of giveaways coming up in the next few weeks. And we're probably going to give about 40 or 50 shirts. I have mugs, tumblers, different things that we're going to be giving away here in the next few, probably four weeks, five weeks. Were you mixing paint in your epoxy with tumblers epoxy? Um, it was, most of this is mica powder, but yes, I did spray. I sprayed gold on it, and that's making it not trellis smooth. Damn it. Leave it to Levi. I'm always really good at making little mistakes. But you know what? I have fun, so go try that one on for size. What's that? Teresa, thanks for, thank you for being here, and thanks for being on our channel now and letting people know. That's cool. That's really cool. That's probably the first time I heard of epoxy. It was probably with like models and stuff like that. I just didn't know all you could do with it. Um, what is it right now? What is the course? I think they're on sale right now. They were $1,000 and then, I don't know. My, my goal for classes is not to make money on the class themselves. We do need to hold your place and cover a good class. That's really a learning experience, so. Um, I think they're five right now. I think I, they're all 500, and I think the average epoxy class is about $1,700 for about half the hands-on. Yeah, we use Workshop 25 too, and I think you get a continue, uh, further discount on that. Oh, this is turning out good. I don't, 
I think you guys are going to like this. It's turning out really good. Hillbilly? Dude, Hillbilly, thank you for the follow. Thanks for even being here, Hillbilly. That is Michael. Michael. It's our badass. The in-house badass. Ellie, Grand River Art. Where's Grand River Art? Is that right like here local or is that local to us? Is, did you say Grand River Art? No. Oh, Grand River Art, okay. Okay, now that I'm done kind of trailing this, I'm gonna go over here and show you guys. We're gonna torch our original piece. I think that's kind of Oh, definitely then. Keep watching because we are going to release all that information on the Florida classes probably within the week. So, this coming week, I mean. The location of class, the one here is Grand Junction, Colorado. Then next week is Dallas, Texas. The week after Dallas, just north of Dallas. Okay, oh yes. I like to let it set on its own so that a lot of that air will naturally come to the top and escape. So you're not kind of pushing it or forcing it too soon. You can get a way smoother top like that. Or else I didn't want to torch it so much that I ruined my pattern either. Look at all those little air bubbles coming out. It's going to leave a really smooth base coat here. It's going to be beautiful. Earl, East Texas Earl. Earl. Dude, thank you, Steve. Thanks for being here. Thanks to Earl from East Texas, too, man. Alabama, thank you so much for being here, and thanks for checking out our work. Share us yours, too. So. Todd, thanks for being here. <laughs> I'm not a very good emoji reader. It's either like, your stuff makes me sick, and I think they're saying it's beautiful. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks for being here on the channel. Oh, that blue is, look at this blue coming out of here. That is just, that's what we're trying to go for here is just that really clean separation of color. If we wanted to, to really make this look more natural, we'd take and sand this um, after it's cured and then it'll cut down through all that glossy top and you'll just have all these striations from the trowel scraping through and it, it'll look just very much like wood grain anyway, so you can get a really cool look out of this. Torching this is, you gotta do that so you get the final amazing look, so. Child of the king, child of the king. Thank you for being here today, guys. We're just doing, finishing our epoxy wood grain sample and talking to some of our people that we look forward to seeing next week. Barbarossa Build LLC said Pretty Blues in there. Pretty Blues, thank you for being here. Build LLC. Barbarossa said, I've been a commercial painter in Dallas for for 40 years. Earl, come out to a class and work with us in Dallas, man. I'd love to work with somebody like you. We have a couple pretty badass commercial painters that we do have come in, decorative painters. And you guys have a really good eye for finishes. I love working with people that have years of experience, and especially in different fields than my own. So I see like different talents really do help each other. Okay, guys. I'm really running into this. It is cool, isn't it? I mean, I feel like I still have this just burning in my loins to just spray stuff on it, but I know it'll probably ruin it. So. But I really want to spray like translucent colors on it because they look badass. And but I also know like what's the chances of it staying pretty. But like you know what I mean. Hmm. You know what? You never. You never know until you know. We sell all these colors, yeah. So if you ever want to just check out our website if you like any of the colors you see here. So okay, I probably shouldn't be doing this, but I shouldn't do half the things I've done in my life. It is so much fun.
We do sell kits. We do sell kits. Hey, let me know, guys. I, I really I want to ask you guys, but please respond to this. This isn't some clickbait shit. But I teach classes, and I, I would guess I've taught probably more people to do, like, professional commercial epoxy installs than anybody I've ever met in the world. I've had about almost 7,000 people, depending on where, in about 28 countries that I've taught how to do epoxy. Countertops, floors, walls, um, swimming pools, roofs. <coughs> Pardon me. And one thing I see is where we are in a society where everything, your, your rent costs you three times more than you should be paying, your groceries cost, cost you three times more than you should be paying, your car costs you more, your insurance costs you more. Um, but you really do need interactive, hands-on training. But I don't believe 2024, we have technology. So some people, if you're like me and you're like 1960s, and I actually was born in 79, so I was 20 years off there almost. But, um, let's say you want hands-on, then come to a hands-on class, but I'm putting a lot of time and a lot of um, work with several people that we're gonna be putting on a very comprehensive, um, interactive, where you can um, get the materials in your hand and work after work hours during um, the week. Um, or if we'll have a day class or an evening class that you can attend. Um, an evening class will be a few more days, but it'll only be a for, for a few hours each night. So you can learn each one of these different techniques. Um, and you can follow along if you're doing your own countertop, and we could do that. But I want it to be very um, personally helpful to the individuals in the class. And we're going to limit how many people can be in the class interacting. But I think it's going to be really fun to do that so I can work with you. But then you won't have to leave your house or something. You could go out in your garage and pour samples like I'm doing. Or what I would recommend is just... Pour a, pour a bathroom, pour a, um, pour a countertop, but it's going to be live where I can interact with you guys in person. So, And I just think that's going to be a fun thing because we already kind of have done that with some people, um, contractors we've worked with for fun to deal with some issues. And I was like, wow, why not do this with you guys? So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. And thank you guys so much for joining our page. We just got done with our wood grain sample here. We're pouring our river table over here. Oh, questions? Or, Answers, Tim, what do you think about it? Badass Tim. Um, there's a there's a dude that knows this stuff. Because love watching others and learning from other experts. I agree. I love watching people that are experts. That's why I'm constantly on YouTube trying to learn something. So where do you teach? Um, we teach all over the world. Um, but right now, most commonly London, Texas, um, and Grand Junction, Colorado. So next week's Grand Junction, the week after that is Texas. Um, and then probably back to Junction and then hopefully London. Here is a river table we're finishing. You see a lot of black on the surface and that's because we're filling a lot of very large fractures and damage on this piece that we're gonna sand back and expose the actual wood itself. Um, we have smoked black under here. You can't really see because it's up against the mold but you can actually see straight through this. It's, it's a mix of kind of smoked gray and clear epoxy. Um, we do need to see and see this back down. You know, I'm gonna have to take probably a strong three-eighths of an inch or something like that or at least a hard quarter like off the top of this whole entire thing to really profile this and get the look I'm wanting out of it but I think it's going to be just absolutely beautiful and I'm excited about it and then over here you can look in a hole with me so I am sorry to hear that I will be praying for you you know what that is so frustrating and I'm sorry that you've had any health issues this right here is our I just call it our billionaire's suitcase. This is supposedly a billionaire's way fancier. That's just what I call them. They're fancier than me from Aspen. And this is their most prized possession. It's been all over the world. And we are sealing and encapsulating it in epoxy. So quite a bit of fun. And I'm going to spray some clear alcohol onto the surface down in there. Um, IR? I'm not sure what they mean with IR. They mean like infrared? Maybe they mean infrared. Maybe they mean AI. So, um, and AI, I'd say no because there's just I th the biggest thing I see in the epoxy world is there just is not a lot of knowledge of high end finishes right now out there and how to really, everything is very linear and, and cheap and how to do inexpensive, um, gimmicky stuff, I believe. And that's kind of what we're, we've been working to change because we have a lot of, you know, realtors, people that own high-end remodel companies um, coming to class and they need real solutions. It can't be some hokey crap, so. Um, 
a good starter size, just grab a two gallon kit and, and knock out a couple bathrooms in your house or something like that if you're looking for countertops and floors. Um, get one of our um, outdoor flex kits or ultra flex kits rather and that's going to be a really good product. Um, everything comes ready to mix if you want to mix the entire thing but good instructions to break it down from there too. So. And you work, do you have YouTube? We do have a YouTube. Check out. Oh, there's a pole here. I'm not dancing. I was going to take you guys on a pretty little walk here so if you guys want to go. Um, check out our YouTube because our TikTok we make zero money on TikTok, and if you notice, we only have like 5,000 followers on this page because, um, because I said I wore a t-shirt that I thought honored children and God, and TikTok didn't like it, so they pulled their channel for the final time. Um, so thank you for joining this channel, and check out YouTube. Um, we're over there, and we've put a lot of work into that, but we're really going to be putting more into our YouTube channel in the near future, and we have been recently. More wall epoxy. I love this as something that we um, let classes do. This is actually real copper we trialed on, just like you saw what I was trialing in there. But this is actually a real true metal conductive copper. Um, one of our other kind of just fun patterns that was just playing around. Some of you guys might have seen me do this one, which is kind of an exciting one. And I hope you've seen the guy holding the camera. His name is Michael, do actual beautiful art pieces. We have the controversial, forever controversial table that's all decommissioned, not real stuff in it, but I can't say the names of what they are or anything or else they'd say no. But this is about a thousand pounds, 110 gallons of casting resin, $7,500 worth of um, pew pews and ammo. And it's all decommissioned, legally inert stuff. We did this for a rock band back like three years ago, but the legal reasons he ended up like kind of it's weight. I wouldn't want to put it out on TikTok why we ended up not being able to give this to him for legal reasons. Um, he wasn't a, the person we thought he was. So here's a wall we poured just for fun. That's about a thousand pounds of epoxy. We wanted to be able to have some, we poured it on a rough back because we wanted to have it be like a muted wall and it actually turned out pretty good. That's just melamine we cast onto. So we, if you're in a class, you'll learn how to do the floors like what's right in front of you here. Um, this is all directly over tile. So our, this is our flooring epoxy over tile. Um, the concrete slab, wood behind me, a wood subfloor, and then a floating metal grid system in here. So thank you guys so much for joining our channel today. Um, please hit the subscribe button and go over to YouTube and try to give us some follows over there, there if you can. And share the world about us and, and let us know what you'd rather see when you get back here. And I'll see you guys, not tomorrow, probably Sunday. So talk to you soon. Monday.